208, truck 6, truck 3, battalion 3 in the on-call inspector. 2303, west 46, street number 208. Hi, this is Division Chief Steve Fessler, and on this episode of Sioux Falls Fire, we go out to the training site and meet some of our newest cadets, and we get an opportunity to go to one of the local commercial construction sites and have a unique training opportunity with an on-site crane. And we go out to the property of our new public safety campus and do some UTV training, all on this episode of Sioux Falls Fire. Hi, I'm Mike Murphy. I'm a battalion chief with Sioux Falls Fire Rescue, and we're here today with Journey Construction doing a joint training exercise. So this was a great opportunity for us to utilize a couple different skill sets that Sioux Falls Fire Rescue uh, possesses. We were able to practice a lot of our EMS skills along with some of our urban search and rescue skills. And so our training scenario today involved a worker who had experienced a cardiac arrest event on the roof of the structure. Our first initial arriving crew initiated EMS care on the patient and was able to stabilize the patient to the point where they could be transported to the ground. While they were initiating EMS care, they activated our technical rescue team, which responded with additional apparatus and able to be able to bring the patient down safely. In conjunction with Journey Construction, we were able to utilize their on-site crane to transport the patient down to the floor. This also involved packaging the patient in what we call a Stokes basket, and also involved bringing one of our technical rescuers who's also trained in EMS along with the patient on the way down. So we were able to provide continuous patient care from point of contact all the way down to the waiting ambulance. Sioux Falls is currently in the midst of a construction boom. And as you look across the high line, you will see multiple cranes in operation at construction sites throughout Sioux Falls. In order to make sure that Sioux Falls Fire Rescue is prepared for these types of situations, we want to be able to utilize on-site equipment if possible in order to provide the best patient care. In this situation, we were able to greatly reduce the amount of time it would take to get that patient to the ground by utilizing the crane that was available on site. With all the construction, we want to be prepared for all these types of different situations. And thanks to Journey Construction today, we had a great training opportunity in order to practice our skills. All of our rescue technicians and our patient care staff are trained for these types of situations, but this was a great opportunity to be able to put it to use in a hands-on situation. Firefighter Matt Hill, Station 5. Uh, today we are here uh, at Journey Construction doing a training evolution, and my role was uh, to be the uh, litter attendant coming down uh, with the crane. So we arrived here, uh, Station 12 was already here providing uh, ALS and BLS care to the patient on top of the roof. Um, we uh, packaged the patient in, in his harness and then uh, lashed him down in the stokes along with medical equipment and then I rode down and below the stokes with him. Yeah, it's very important that we uh, stay with the patient once we uh, make contact with them. Um, you know, riding down through the air is not something they'll do every day. They could get scared, uh, and just for that reaffirming or reassuring uh, contact with them, and then also if they have a medical event in transition, be able to uh, do an assessment and provide a little bit of care. Yeah, training like this, uh, we don't have the opportunity to work with uh, construction crews every day so it's really awesome to be invited to be a part of this and uh, this is really very valuable training for something that could very realistically happen. So I'm out here with our current Cadet Academy and uh, we're starting their first live fire training for this academy and I'm with uh, Brad Esser here he's one of our new cadets. Uh, welcome Brad. Thank you. Um, gonna ask you a couple questions. First of all where are you originally from and what did you do prior to coming with uh, Sioux Falls Fire Rescue? Well, I'm originally from Brandon. Once I graduated in 2008, I moved to Sioux Falls and I've been here ever since. Um, for the last 10 years, I was running excavators like over there, um, putting underground utilities like water and sewer. And then I was also a UPS driver, semi-driver for the last year. Okay. So. So what, what brought you to Sioux Falls Fire Rescue? Uh, it's something that I've always wanted to do ever since I was a little kid. Okay. Um, and the timing just worked out to where um, I was offered a position to try out, you know, and uh, I took it. Jumped you know, at it, didn't yes, you? yes, sir. That's good. Um, so we've, uh, we're about midway through the Cadet Academy, and uh, 
What are some of the things you've learned so far, and how's it going? Uh, I think it's going really well. Um, what we've learned, I don't even know where to start. It's, uh, it's, it's, it was eye-opening how prolific we have to be at so many different skills to be successful at, at our job. And so. with this group, you all started with your EMT training in the beginning, and you all got through it, passed, you're ready to go as EMTs, correct? Correct. Good. So, uh, like I said, halfway through, Loving it so far? Yes, sir, absolutely. All right, well, I will let you get back to work and uh, let you move on with the next part of the evolution. Perfect, thank you, thank appreciate you. it. All right, I'm with our next cadet, uh, Jason Vandisto. Uh, Jason, welcome. Thank you. Uh, how's it going so far? It's going great, it's awesome out here. Yep, uh, about midway through the Cadet Academy. Uh, some of the stuff you've been working on, how's it going? Good. Um, they're teaching us a lot. We're learning a lot of new things. Keep doing the repetitions. And yep. And today, first real live fire action, pulling the hose, going in the structure, all that type of stuff. Yep. Have you been in there yet? No, I haven't. So I'm the look, next crew going okay, in. Okay, next crew. Looking forward to it? Yeah. All right. So uh, um, overall, with, with the Cadet Academy, how, how do you feel it's going? Are you been excited with it? Is it what you expected? Super excited and it's more than I expected. It's a lot of fun and I'm learning a lot more than I ever thought I would about fire and EMS. So So where'd you originally come from? Inwood, Iowa. Inwood. And what'd you do prior to coming here? I uh, had a finished carpentry with my dad. Okay. So you know the building construction, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That'll serve you well. Yeah, it's helped out a little bit. So. Okay, good. Well, I know you're busy, and I'm going to let you get back back at it here, so thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right, next uh, cadet I'm with here is Eric Grutenbohr. Eric, welcome. Thank you. How, how's it going so far out here? It's going great. We're, going. we're learning lots. Uh, we're moving quick. You know, starting to do some live burns here, so I like really the starting excitement. to enjoy that. Yeah. I like the excitement. So you're... Uh, Midway through, roughly, with the Cadet Academy. Yes, sir. Uh, what have you learned so far? Uh, quite a bit. It's, it's pretty humbling, you know, learning all the different uh, ways to do uh, fire ground operations mm -hmm. and just um, the tricks of the trade. Uh, there's a lot of knowledge here, and so just trying to soak it all in and, uh, yeah, move at a quick pace and, and take it all in. Yeah. Good. So uh, where'd you originally come from? I originally came from born in Ontario, Canada. Spent some time out west in British Columbia before uh, moving back to the Midwest here. My wife's from the area, so we okay. chose to be by home. And what'd you do prior to coming to Sioux Falls Fire Rescue? I did a lot of conservation work. Okay. So out west, spent some time working with the salmon and uh, uh, monitoring their populations a little bit. And down here, worked with the conservation district, okay. um, planting trees for farmers and Okay. That kind of wildlife and hunting habitat. All right. And so, what brought you here to us? What, uh, what, what was the calling for you? Yeah, kind of a number of things. It's it's always been in in the back of my mind uh, as a goal. Mm -hmm. um, I applied and just hope for the best. And you know, I enjoyed serving the community with the conservation district. You know, meeting people and being part of the community that way. But uh, looking for something deeper something uh something to belong to you know the real the family aspect of this organization yep. really appealed to me so awesome just really was looking forward to that and all right i love everything about firefighting well that's great i know you guys are busy so i'm not going to keep you so i'll let you get back at it appreciate it thanks Thank sir you. this is firefighter egging i'm here at a structure fire on a blah belt with truck two we're the second unit in. Uh, we got here, there was a, a plume coming out of the house. Looked like we had fire coming from multiple sides, Alpha and Bravo side. Uh, my truck was assigned basement division. Uh, we went in and did a primary search initially. This house in particular, um, there was a lot of random debris in the house that made it difficult to do a primary search. We were also unaware if the house was occupied or not, or if there were animals in there. Um, these older kind of houses, they're often split up. Um, this happened to be uh, not split up as much as it could have been. Um, it was a single family dwelling instead of multi-family dwelling. Sometimes we see multi-family dwelling in these older houses. Um, 
not sure about insulation, you're not sure about structural integrity of the house at all um, on these older houses, so it's, it's a little bit of a touch and go. I'm assuming this house is an older construction, um, which actually makes the integrity a little bit better. Uh, you have uh, uh, the newer construction where the, the, the house can collapse basically in five to ten minutes, but in a house like this, it can withstand fire for a lot longer. Battalion Chief Garrett Delaney uh, out here at the new training site. Today we're doing some UTV training uh, with all of our crews, doing some recertification. Everybody's certified to drive the UTVs and every couple of years we got to recertify them. So we're out here driving a course uh, off-road. All right, so currently we have four UTVs. Uh, we have three of them in operations and one is out at the training center to assist with them. Uh, that's mainly to haul equipment, but can be put into service anytime we need. The other three are typically used for uh, off-road grass fires. Uh, we also use them for things like uh, some of the big races, the Avera race or things like that, where we have a lot of runners or people on the bike trail. We can take them on the bike trail or some of the other uh, hard to reach places that you can't take a normal vehicle. We have skid units in them. Uh, we can spray water or we can also haul people uh, with a, a leader and uh, package them up on a backboard and haul them out if we need to. So we use the UTVs because they're a lot smaller and they're more capable to go in tight places or places that have a lot of people around. We can't take our fire trucks on them. It's hard to take our fire trucks places that are off road if it's not paved. Uh, we have certain ones that we can but these give us a bigger flexibility to be able to do that. Uh, we can go into tight spaces, uh, maybe if there's a lot of trees or steeper terrain, these are going to handle it a lot better. Uh, it makes it easier to go down through there. Kind of with our course here, uh, we've got a creek crossing, so we go down through the water. Uh, we have some up and down some steep hill, and then we also have some side hill just to give people a feel of how that uh, machine is going to handle when it's in those situations. So we're out here today uh, basically just to recertify all of our firefighters. Um, all of our firefighters that are on the floor starting at the Cadet Academy go through this training and get certified to drive these because we never know who is going to have to drive them when we go off road. So everybody's certified and what we're doing today is we're just uh, refreshing their certification and getting them some drive time so that they can operate safely when they're off road. Hi, I'm Tyler Adamo with Sioux Falls Fire Rescue. I'm a firefighter on uh, Rescue 12 on B-Shift. Uh, we're out here today at one of, uh, at a house that the city has acquired. It's gonna be demolished anyway, so we're out here doing some training today. Uh, doing some uh, training with vertical ventilation up on the roof, cutting some holes and uh, some rescue VEIS, vent to enter isolate search stuff. Uh, for rescuing people out of a bedroom or something like that, a quick search of a room, and uh, some uh, firefighter self-rescue techniques. Training at a house like this is really valuable because we don't have to worry about breaking stuff. It's not going to cost the city any money when we break the window out. It's all going to get destroyed anyway, but it, it's a lot more realistic than, uh, say, what we do, what we can do at the training center just because uh, we're worried about breaking stuff out there. We don't want to smash windows and cause a bunch of damage because we got to reuse it. A uh, house like this is really valuable for us because we can use it multiple times by multiple shifts. Uh, we can do uh, training up on the roof with the windows from the exterior or we can go inside and do searches. Uh, it's really nice because the first time you're here you've never seen the inside before whereas We've all been out at the training center a hundred times. We know the layout of the buildings perfectly. In the real world, when we get to a fire, we won't know what the house is like on the inside or what we're gonna run into, and it, it's very realistic that way. Every time we come to a structure like this, uh, it's kind of fun because we run into different challenges. Uh, every building's built a little bit different. Contractors and construction crews, when they build a building, they don't all do it the exact same way. Um, and it's good to see how they've done it in the past or versus like a new build or something that was built a hundred years ago. It's great to see all the different construction techniques and how it comes apart or how we can uh, 
breach through it or or just challenges that we run into that we need to figure out how to overcome. One neat thing about this structure as opposed to most of the other ones we get is this one's a fourplex as opposed to being just a single family home. Um, you can train in the different apartments or uh, the multiple windows and the different levels it makes it really challenging and unique. Thank you for watching this episode of Sioux Falls Fire. If you'd like to learn more about Sioux Falls Fire Rescue, go to siouxfalls.org fire. And we'll see you next time on Sioux Falls Fire.